We live in a time where there is literally fighting and rancor every day on social media. If you're on social media all the time, young people, try to take a break at least every other day. I know that seems impossible, but it's not. Because if you're in these fisticuffs every day, if there are these unkind things being said every day, the presidential campaign that we're all watching play out right now is terrible. pretty, terrible. it's terrible. terrible. And, and it's really one candidate whose name we won't say. But the truth is, if you go down ballot, you go to the Senate races, the House races, all around this country, there are literally people running with pictures of themselves with AR-15s, and I don't, I'm a gun owner, I'm a Virginian, I believe in the Second Amendment, I don't have a problem with that. But what I'm saying is when you're putting your babies on your Christmas card with your AR and you're sending a message, or you are um, having a campaign where you're calling your opponent everything but a child of God, you're not talking about issues, you're talking about bloodbaths, that's not good for us. Because we're humans. We're relational creatures. We're not transactional. And the problem is, young people, we've become very transactional. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So what I'm saying is, we live in uncertain times, but what cannot be uncertain is how you take care of and love you and nurture yourself and be good to yourself. So again, we're talking about, we got to talk about self-care beyond the surface because again, going back to us as black people, we do surface really well when it comes to that emotional stuff because we are taught, particularly as black women, and this goes back to legacy burden. That's a psychological term that therapists use about that bone memory and that legacy of slavery and how we still carry that. And you're thinking, well, that's crazy. This is 2024. I can't possibly be carrying something from the 1600s or the 1700s. Yeah, you can. Because it is passed down from great grandmama to grandmama to you that there's a way you comport yourself. Suck it up, girl. You got this. You can handle this. And our brothers, that's a whole nother level of black men are taught they aren't even allowed to have feelings. You ain't a man if you cry. You're not a man if you need help. It's not okay not to be okay. No, it actually is. You are not less of a man because you need help or because you cry or you have feelings. You're a human being. And we need to stress that in our community because we don't. We always go back to church and Jesus. And again, I'm good with that. Your faith anchors you. Your faith is what sustains you. But I can't find anywhere in my Bible where Jesus told me I can't go see a therapist or if I need some medication, I can't take it if I need it. Or if I need to de-stress and take some time off that I can't rest. In fact, there are a myriad of scriptures. I think of Elijah, and I think after he has dealt with the strange fire and he's defeated the prophets of Baal, and, you know, Elijah's tired, right? But Elijah's also afraid of this woman named Jezebel, which makes no sense. You just defeated the prophets, but you're afraid of this woman named Jezebel. I'm going somewhere with this. And what happens? Elijah says, God, I, I'm ready to die. I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. What does God do? God could have tightened him up and straightened him up and said, you better get it right. No, that's not what he did. He laid under that mammary tree. He fed him. He let him rest. There are myriad scriptures, David, of resting and waiting, picking your battles, being strategic about the ones you fight. And I want us to learn to do that a little bit. You don't have to take on everything. This is a crazy world we're living in. People are saying things that you wouldn't believe that people would say. They wouldn't have said it 20, 30 years ago. Now everything's on the table. You know, I was on social media, and there was this uh, beautiful picture that somebody had put out with all these black pilots. It was a group of black pilots for United or something, and it was historic because you had the first captain, the second officer, the flight crew. It was an all-black crew, and it, the picture went viral. And then there were others who saw the picture who said, well, I need to make sure there was no DEI going on here because if I get on the plane, the plane might not fly. And I wrote back, you ever hear the Tuskegee Airmen? Maybe. Maybe. That's the ignorance, the level of ignorance that we're dealing with, the assault on our value as African American people. That somehow we're not qualified to be in the spaces that I, I know and you know.
know we had to work three times as hard to get, even though we had the same qualifications, maybe better qualifications. And we had to take three times the nonsense that other people would never have to endure. And we have to do it with dignity and with grace because we're not allowed to lose our cool, God forbid. We're not allowed to be human. I'm telling you, young people, you're not ready to go from this campus to corporate unless you start to open your eyes and see that it isn't all pretty. It isn't kumbaya. It isn't just, well, I got my stuff and we're all equal now and all that old civil rights stuff my parents are talking about or my professors are talking about. They're living in the dark ages. No, they're not. It is right here, right now. When you leave this campus, and you go out into your next and you start your journey in the world, you need to know your value. There's a book I want you to buy. It's called Know Your Value. It's by one of my best friends, Mika Brzezinski. She's on Morning Joe. You see Mika, she does a lot of work and it's all called Know Your Value. And in that book, Mika tells you that women, when we negotiate our salaries, particularly right out of college, whatever offers extended to us, we tend to accept it. Men do not do that. When a man gets a job offer and they say, starting salary $65,000, you get this, this, and this, he goes, yeah, no, I'm going to need $72,000. And, you know, if I have to relocate my family or I have to do this, this, I'm going to need this. And nine times out of ten, he gets exactly what he asked for. And do you know why? Because he asked for it. Women, on the other hand, who may walk in with better credentials, and everything else, we already know we make, as black women, 68 cents on every dollar that our white male counterparts make. White women make 87 cents about on every dollar. And for Latino, indigenous women, and other women of color, they're not even on the radar. They're paid 50 cents, almost 56 something cents and out to that dollar, okay? So I want you to negotiate your worth just because they offer you the job at 60 or 70, ask for more. Think about it, do your homework, look at the industry, and then negotiate, particularly if you're going to work for Google, or you're going to work for Coca-Cola, or you're going to work for one of these Fortune 50 blue chip companies where you get stock options, negotiate more stock options in lieu of salary. Get that money. You get that money young and you get it early, and if you have to eat peanut butter and jelly for a year, that's what you do to get that money in your bank account, and then you keep it and you don't touch it until you're 60 years old or 65. We don't talk like this, and we need to start talking like this to our young people. What's your takeaway from what she had to well, say? Well, my takeaway is that in this really new 21st century moment, as higher educational professors, we have to do some different things to really develop students, uh, as particularly uh, young black women students, in a different way. That it has to be a different paradigm, uh, given all of the different variables that young women will be facing when they graduate. What is it that um, made the biggest impression on you? Um, the part where Ms. Sophia uh, mentioned about don't be that yes person you know like the one that always says yes to everything because I do find myself being a um, caretaker of my mom and a grandchild and going here to Norfolk State with my master's degree I am always yes to everywhere I'm like pulled in a hundred different places what led you in this direction of self-care and wellness at some point you had to say this needs this is an area that I want to talk about why? A loaded question. Mm -hmm. My last book, Be the One You Need, 21 Life Lessons I Learned Taking Care of Everyone But Me, kind of says it all, right? Mm -hmm. I got COVID really bad in February of 2020. I was deathly ill. I was on the road giving a speech in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There was an outbreak. Congressman Luke Letlow died. He was at that event where I was the keynote. Other people got sick. Scalise got sick. A lot of people got sick. This was before we knew what the COVID yeah. was. I think it was March when the government announced it and we started to talk about it. By the time I got from Baton Rouge to my next stop was in Indiana, giving a speech at a number of colleges, DePaul, Purdue, etc. I was deathly ill. And luckily, one of my sororities was a doctor. Um, they took care of me as best they could. Um, we didn't know what I had. Was it the flu? Was it this thing they were talking about? 
But that, laying in that hotel, being away from your family, and being sick like that, my fever was well over 104 degrees. I mean, I didn't know it was bad. Doctors were on the phone, what to do, put her on a plane, not. I turned the corner, I got better because my sorority sisters took care of me. And I had never met them before out there. So it was just, talk about sisterhood, right? Uh, but that laying there for those few days is where I started formulating that book and realizing I better do some stuff different because life is short and you're getting older and there's a lot you still want to do mm -hmm. and um, you're probably not doing it right because you're running too hard and you're not spending time traveling and doing the things you want to do. You've mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. so much of yourself to everybody else mm -hmm. and that resonated with women everywhere but particularly black women.